elements of like the Hunger Games, Squid Games, Japanese game shows. Back if it's your first time, my name is Talia Adewoli, and this is this white dance today. We're gonna to be talking about ready, set, love. I've been sitting on this review for a minute now. I I don't know why I should have done it a while ago. I just it just never happened. But I absolutely enjoyed this show. I've seen it multiple times since I watched it, and I only watched it two weeks ago. But before we get into it, please try to do all the right things, and yeah, let's dive on in. So this is a tie. Um, limited series Netflix limited series. So it is on Netflix. Uh, it came out early actually it came out in February And I, I put it on my list immediately, but I was deep into I can't remember what I was deep into in February I feel like maybe it was the tail end of Singles Inferno and then I started um, mm, It was MMH marry my husband. I was deep into that. I was invested nothing was swaying me I needed to see Juwon get her revenge. <laughs> so it kind of just started gathering dust on my watch list, like a lot of the other stuff. But I'm watching them now, which is kind of nice. So, you know, I got my time back. So I'm able to do a lot more reviews, which I've missed, actually. I love the reactions, and I'm going to keep doing those. But I've missed the reviews. I really do enjoy the reviews. Anywho, the short description says, in a world grappling with a dwindling male population, an unassuming woman becomes a contender in a government-sponsored dating competition. So basically, some, some vi kind of virus hit the world and men, the population of men started like, it, it was becoming non-existent. So the remaining men, they, they gathered them up and they put them on this thing called uh the farm i believe it's called the farm yeah if i remember i know i've watched it multiple times but it is yeah i've also watched a lot since then i think it's the farm because at first i was like oh how come they're treating the men so nice like yeah their population is doing doing but they're, they're treated so well and then i realized that it's it's more of a prison than anything because they can't leave they are the male uh, population they're all that's basically left and when it comes time for them to get married they put on this dating show <laughs> called ready set love now the concept alone i really liked the concept of like oh these, this population is dwindling and this is how we're going to marry them and repopulate the earth and try and you know get more uh men or males into the society but the aspect of the revolution i i felt like that was half-baked which was my only thing that it didn't really bother me to be honest i didn't care but if we're talking proper review and thinking like you know concept wise it was half-baked and i i felt like they could have done not necessarily without it because they did use it to as a distraction in the end but maybe they could have not focused so much on the planning details of the revolution since it wasn't really you know fully baked if, if that makes sense but let's get into it this follows dave Valent uh, valentine chanel bovey and then the gentlemen the gentlemen are the five guys who are being uh married off uh through the contest and uh they are son max Jin, paper and almond honestly we don't care about Jin. <laughs> we barely notice Jin throughout this whole thing so the people the four people the main four guys that we are centered on are son max um, paper and almond. <laughs> I I cannot say the names of the actors. I apologize. There's no way. It's Thai. It's Thai. So Thailand. If I try to say this, you will shut my channel down. I will probably go practice because this was so good that I'm thinking that I might, you know, uh, if you hear if you hear creaking, my house is my house is old. It is what it is. Um, it was so good that I think I will actually look into more Thai stuff. Because I really enjoyed this. Like I said, I've watched it multiple times. The main actress who plays Day, so gorgeous, so beautiful, such big, beautiful eyes. Like, I just loved watching this girl. She was charismatic. She was such a good actress. Uh, she was engaging. You wanted to see her on your screen, everything. When she was not on the screen, I missed her. That's how much I loved Day and the, the actress that played her. Okay, I, I think I can say her name. It's either Nietzsche Palak. Tong, tong kam, or is Nikapalak Tongkam. Oh, is that her? Oh, that was Chanel. Nikapalak is Chanel. So the girl that plays there is Kemisara. 
Paladesh. Okay, hers is actually really easy to say. The guy that plays song, I can't pronounce it. No, no, I will not even try. I will butcher his name. I will butcher it completely. Yeah, so Kemisera, love her. I will actually want to watch more things that she's been in. I loved it. So the dynamic, the entire dynamic is she's obviously from the poor side. They, they introduced a lottery system this time around because they saw that the show was losing fan base. Obviously, people were we're figuring out like most reality TV shows that it is highly produced and usually only the rich people end up winning the show. So only the rich women end up being married off to the gentlemen. So the producers were seeing that there was, uh, there was that gap happening. So they decided to do a lottery system where the just regular folk, regular women in society, so basically the poor ones, would be entered into the competition of course the whole thing was that they will be flushed out within like the first few rounds but they somehow managed to just stay in there and um it has to do with a relationship with son and that's the main couple she's the female lead son is the male lead and it centers around their whole you know dynamic and how they slowly fall in love and everything and it was it was great i loved it the connections um, the way they pull from the connections, the way they pull from their past. Oh, beautiful. I loved it. I've watched it, like I said, multiple times. And my first thought when I saw the gentleman and when I saw that Almond, Almond is the oldest gentleman. Uh, when I saw that he was starting to like Day, I honestly preferred him to Son. Because I hated the way Son was treating her in the beginning. I just, I wasn't there for it. I mean, I like, I, I can understand that, you know, you're, you're not, you're not happy or you're, what's the word? What's the word that I'm looking for? You're unimpressed with your situation because obviously you're, you're in a golden cage is what it was. That's what the men were. They were being bred <laughs> for commercial uh, use. It was exactly what it is. The rich people were using them and monopolizing the men of the society. I get that. You're disenfranchised. I get that. But it doesn't really... It's not an excuse for you to treat people the way you did. And the way he was treating her in the beginning, I hated it. When he gave her a low score after their date, I was so pissed. I wanted to slap him through the whole thing. But I get it. Like, it was their story. And it really did help play into how they fell in love, you know, how they met, how they met each other how everything just kind of seamlessly flowed together for the series i'm trying not to spoil too much in case you guys haven't seen it and you do want to see it because i'm recommending this 100 percent. it was visually stimulating there were so many colors it was so beautiful it is better to watch it in thai than to watch it in english i would suggest that you watch it in thai and then you can re-watch it in english if you're feeling like you want to re-watch it i feel like you would probably re-watch it because I don't know if you're like me, I'm not a one and done. If I like something, I watch it multiple times until I am sick and tired of it. I do the same thing for books, music. It's just the way I am. How I find the time, I'm not really sure. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, I, I, like I said, I loved it. I wanted to speak to... What was I? Oh, <laughs> there was this one scene when Son in a week was giving Gru. I don't know if you've seen it, but if you've seen it, can you please let me know? There's... A scene in Despicable Me, I'm not sure which of them, but in one of the movies, Gru was in a wig, and I swear, when someone put on that wig and, and did this, I was like, he was giving Gru. <laughs> I kind of look he liked it, though. But I really enjoyed this. Chanel, Chanel was the rich uh, kid who was destined to be, um, who was, well, I guess, fated. No, I won't say fated. She was orchestrated to be married off to son and I, I still don't understand how son was the favorite so they never really explain it but out of the gentleman son was the most popular and son was the one that people liked i i think maybe it was the whole um unavailable thing which just made him made people want him more because he just didn't care so he was very cold they used to call him the ice prince and i think that was the draw and it it, it boosted his whole popularity and a lot of people wanted him um most so he was the most favored out of the gentleman and i guess chanel was supposed to marry him i like chanel i didn't like her first entry i didn't like it of course you're not meant to she's a popular girl she's a rich girl she's not supposed to give a damn about anybody but i did like chanel even before that scene ended i felt like there was a lot to her before we even got into her story and i loved how her own story played out i also enjoyed oh the producer the woman that played the producer that actually was so gorgeous 
love that she had her own story arc as well like if you see anybody on this show they had their own thing going on you know um i'm trying not to spoil days main story with son and her own family i'm hoping that you guys go and see the see the series it's six episodes guys six episodes you can watch it you can duke it out in one night honestly it's really it was really fun for me to experience this and i really really enjoyed it the comedy was on point it's the kind of comedy that i like where they break the uh fourth wall and they talk to the camera oh, they don't really talk to the camera but they do look at it like they do a, a lot of that the humor was there it was popping it was in places where you didn't expect there was a lot of hearts there was touching moments there was like serious moments there was actual you know life stake moments and i just i i like it i like what they put together and i wanted more episodes in fact I needed them to go more into the afterlife you know the after aftermath of everything and what happened with everybody i needed them to dive into that they also explore everything um with uh topics of you know politics corruption um topics of lgbtq that like they include that in there like it was very very inclusive and i think that's what i enjoyed most about the series it just it had everything for me you know like the hunger games if the the um end end result was not not them killing you but you marrying somebody in the end that's exactly what it is and they had all these little games throughout the entire series where it was so much fun you know how we i enjoy watching people play games that's why the devil's plan was such a huge thing for me i enjoy people watching i enjoy seeing how people analytically solve problems so watching them you know deal with each each um game each um level each scenario it was just fun for me i really did enjoy it like i said hunger games but if the end result was for you to marry and nobody died that is exactly what it was given with a hint of japanese game shows and squid games again if nobody died if i had to rate this for me it was a 9 out of 10 honestly the only thing that i take points of was the half-baked revolution um revolution that they were planning other than that they sold it for me well, yeah, I've been sitting on this review for a while, so I decided that I might as well put it out there. <laughs> I'll be sure to do all the right things. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!